All right, let's adjust this camera here. I think we're good. We get a little light adjustment as well. I think we're okay. Paul, how you doing? Good. Good. Chris. Let's uh, let's wait for everybody to get on here and make sure that everybody can hear us and see us okay. I got the uh, the computer going here so I can read the comments as they come in because my eyes are getting bad. I got something that big <laughs> <laughs> because I can't read anything else on the phone. I'm the same way. Yeah. Um, oh, we got uh, we got a bunch of people here. Mylon Stearns here. Kirk C is here. Teresa Flanders is here. She's here all the time. Derek Mule or Mull, I'm sorry. Eric Nearing. I'd rather be fishing. All right, Chris Clark, Jason C, Kirk C, um, Dennis Clement, hello from central Wisconsin, hello from northern Michigan, and uh, make sure, okay, there we go, Jeff Abbott saying Lima Charlie, so we're loud and clear, Ever Vanderhyde, ever you're here like every week, it's always good to see you, and I always see, uh, there's Blind Osprey, Tim, good to see you, uh, Leroy Dowding, owner of Purple Taco Fly Supply, you know Leroy, you ever met him? Nice guy. Probably have. Yeah, oh, I'm sure you have, <laughs> super nice guy. Uh, don't forget, the new 2022 fly kits are available now on purpletacoflysupply.com. Leroy's got them all set up. You can go on there. You can tie all those new flies that we just put out the recipes for, and they're going to catch fish. I can guarantee you that. There's one in there I'm going to give to you. It's, I called it the uh, the moldy lemon. That thing looks really good. But uh, for those of you that are just coming out of this channel, thanks for being here. For everybody that's been on here many times in the past, thanks for coming back. My name's Chris. I run Dark Blue Charters here in Manistee. And don't forget that these Sunday night live streams are brought to you proudly by Dreamweaver Lures. Check them out, dreamweaverlures.com. You like Dreamweaver? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, guys, gals, I am super stoked because I have somebody sitting next to me tonight that I've been trying to get on the show for a while. But he's one of the busiest guys I know. He's also one of the best, if not the best, uh, charter guy in this port, maybe Lake Michigan, Great Lakes. Paul Schlafly, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Paul runs Riverside Charters here in Manistee. If you've never heard of him, I'm surprised. He runs, like I said, he runs one of the best boats um, around here, um, really around anywhere. He's the guy that, when I moved up here in the late 90s, I rented a house from you. Yep. Right there. Right on the river where my boat was. Right yep. by it, overlooking the boat. Yeah. And so I had to look down and see those beautiful boats every day. And me being a bass guy and a walleye guy, you know, growing up, um, I was just intrigued by what the heck you guys were doing. And uh, Paul really helped me out so much over the years, I can never say thanks enough. If I ever had a question, if I ever wanted to know how to do something, all I had to do was call the guy, and he always answered the phone. So thanks for that. All, those, all no over the years, Paul, you've helped me out yeah, tremendously. we even won a tournament together. We did. Yeah. We did. Yeah, we won. Uh, Last one I fished. I haven't fished one in a couple years. Yeah, now. the Budweiser a couple years ago, two, three years yeah. ago. Or was it the Splash? I can't remember. That was remember. the Budweiser. It was the Bud, yeah. That's I am fishing. I'm going to fish it this year. Are you? I don't know if we are or not. I hope we are. Yeah, I'm going to plan yeah. on it. Well, great. So if you're yeah. in there, I'm not even going to join it then. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did. We won that. That was a lot of fun there. Yeah. We had a great time. Yeah, I've been lucky enough to fish with him quite a few times, and uh, just over the years, he's helped me out so much. So, again, thanks. I don't need to drag that out anymore. You always have my sincere appreciation, though. So, Dakota Joe is here. Good to see you, Joe. Brian uh, Denzow is here. Hi from the UP. How's it up in the UP? It's, uh, what, 70 here today? Yeah, hopefully the ice is gone up there. Uh, it might be. I don't know. It might not be. Uh, I, it crazy. goes late up there. Yeah. Really late. Yeah, we went from, uh, like I was just telling Paul here, we went from like 38 one day to 78 the next day. And I didn't know I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to open the windows or close the windows or light the wood stove or what. I finally got the top off my river boat. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, so how was the river fishing all year? Getting them. It's been good. It was a good spring. There's still a lot of fish in the river. Is still, there? Yeah, still, they're still spawning you know, nice. pretty strong. So. Okay, you been Thank out lately? You. I was out Saturday. How'd you guys do? Pretty good. We landed four. And, all right. Saturday. Well, that's that's a good day. Yeah. What are they hitting these uh, days? Spawn plugs, a little mix. Yeah, I was getting them in a mix. Beads, okay. you know, yeah, beads, beads are the big thing. Of know. course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you ever want to book a trip with Paul, um, you're never going to go wrong. Just make sure that uh, you book it way in advance because I know that you're two sometimes years out uh, well, for getting people in a year to two. Yeah. But uh, RiversideCharters.com. Paul runs Big Lake trips and river trips. And guys, gals, you're not going to find a better guide out there. He runs a great, I've fished him on the river quite a few times. He runs a great boat there too. Have a lot of fun. And he's one of the most patient guys I've ever met. <laughs> With me on there, missing every bite I think I had, he, he, ne he never, never stopped smiling. Maybe he's just laughing at me. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, great, great dime. Um, 
Mandy Arkansas is here. You know Mandy. Oh, yeah. That's why. Good to Hi, see Mandy. you, Mandy. Good to see you. We know Mandy. Oh, Scott's here too. All right. Yeah, he's here as well. Nice hey, every, everybody, Scott Argus Singer's on here. Scott, from the past couple of videos, you got to see him, talk to him quite a, quite a lot. And Scott's uh, the general manager at Dreamweaver Lures. If you have any questions regarding Dreamweaver stuff, give Scott a shout on here. He's always happy to answer things. And Scott first made it for Paul for, for quite a while. Five, six years, I think he was mating for you. I got some of his custom plugs in here. I was going to try to dig out. <laughs> he painted. So I'm sure we caught a bunch of fish on him. I'm sure he'd love to see him. You just hold him up right there yeah. for the camera. <laughs> I'm sure he'd love to see him. Oh, Jeff Spear. He's late, but he's here. Pat Enos is here. Bob Pringle. Howdy back to you. Uh, Scott Ergensinger just said, best captain I know. <laughs> I don't think he's talking about me. I think he's talking about you. Uh, Joe Kresnick is here. And Jeff Spear. Great taxidermist. Yeah, taxidermy. Yeah. You do a you do a lot in the off season, I know. Yeah, I'm leaning down on it. Are you? Yeah. But uh, you do not only animal mounts, you know, full full shoulder mounts, but you'll yeah. do fish too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did a deer for me one year. Yep. It came out great. Came out really good. Um, and I've seen some of your uh, some of your work on fish too. Okay. Really nice job. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your paint your paint is really good. So yeah, if you ever uh, if you ever in Manistee, you catch a monster, get a hold of Paul. Uh, like I said, RiversideCharters.com. His phone number's right on there. You can call him up. Don't call him too late at night, though, because uh, he's in bed pretty early because yeah. he's running trips hard all summer long. Oh, Bob Hunter saying, what's up, Paul? Good hey, to Bob. see you, Bob. Hey, Bob. Yeah, a whole bunch of people. Uh, Jeff Spears said you did a steelhead. Oh, okay. Nice. And yeah, Lamar Erdman from PA. Good to see you there, Lamar. How's things out in Pennsylvania? All right. A lot of good people here. We have... Oh, we got just over 100 people tuning in right now. Already got 23 thumbs up, and uh, we've hardly done anything. People just give us thumbs up for just sitting here and trying to look pretty, which I fail at every time. But tonight we're going to talk about plugs. Um, Paul is one of the best plug runners I know. Uh, if I ever have questions on plugs, he's normally the guy I call up first. Uh, Paul, how long have you been fishing here in Lake Michigan? Oh, my whole life. Yeah. I, mean, I grew up here, but right. I've been a captain since 83. So. Okay. Yep. Been a while. Yeah, been a while. <laughs> but I mean, even before you were a captain, you were out there fishing. Oh, yeah, all the time. I grew up right in the mecca of the fishing. You right. Know, back then, the fishing was unbelievable. Oh, yeah. In the 70s, you know. Yep, yep. Way back in the day. It was great. Yeah. So, Paul's got a lifetime experience just running plugs. And like I said, if I ever have a question uh, when it comes to plugs, he's the guy I call up. We're going to talk about different plug sizes, when we run them, how we run them, different times of the season, how they catch fish. Little things you can do to improve them as well. There's little uh, little techniques that Paul does mm -hmm. quite often, a little, little customization here and there. But uh, I'll talk about the fishing report real quick. Have you heard anything lately on the big lake? Not much. You know, some trout, lake trout around, a few browns. Nothing, yeah. No salmon. I haven't heard many salmon yeah, caught yet. Yeah, that's why I've heard. They're all down well. south right now. Oh, yeah. To the water warms. Oh, oh it's absolutely. Too cold. Yeah, I think uh, the first tournament of the year is either this weekend or next weekend down in Michigan City, yeah, yeah. down there in the Coho Capital. They're whacking them down there. Oh, they're destroying yeah. them. Yeah, I'm seeing posts every day on Facebook mm -hmm. and uh, Instagram and everything else. Hey, by the way, if you ever want to follow us on other social media sites, uh, go in the description down below after this post. You can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook. All those links are right there. I do post a lot of things on those other places, like uh, in the middle of the week, if something's going on, like a good fish bite or whatnot, a lot of times I'll post that on Facebook and Instagram. So make sure you're checking that out also. But yeah, uh, same thing that I've heard. A uh, few, few browns, not many, though. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, not not a whole lot, but the water's still super cold. It's got to it, it's. We've had a lot of north wind, and it's just been too cold. Yeah. I haven't even had my boat in yet, and I've always had it by now. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are just talking sure. about that. I'm still two weeks away from mine going yeah. in. Just finishing up a bunch of maintenance. Oh, that also reminds me, had a lot of questions on this. The maintenance videos that I did on the boat over the winter, um, as far as the painting, the floor, the floor prep, everything like that. I have all those videos compiled. I'm going to put them out in one big video, and uh, you can go through. You can pick and choose what you want to watch out of there. But I have video on there about how we did the gunnels, how we did uh, the top of the gunnels, how we did the engine work, how we did the heater install. Dad, we have put a dash heater in, oh, wow. uh, an actual running off. Awesome. Oh, it's gonna be great. No more, no more uh, fogged up windows in yeah. the morning. It drives me nuts. But uh, I'm gonna have all that out here, probably two or three weeks. Um, that's something you can check out later. And don't forget, if you're looking to have custom flooring installed on your boat, custommarineflooringmi.com right in Ludington. They're doing my boat. I'm getting that marine mat put in. That, uh, yeah, that I was foam. gonna ask you about that. I was thinking about putting that in Oh, too. it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. These guys came out. Um, 
I don't mean to go off topic here, but uh, talking to Paul here, these guys came out, you know, in the old days, they had to lay out all that sheeting and mark it mm -hmm. all out. These guys came out with little dots, put it around the boat, took photographs, put it into the computer. They were done in a half wow. hour. And they're going to have it all set up here in a couple weeks and install, okay. install within a couple hours. Wow. Yeah, so much easier on the legs and the feet, yep. and the, the sun doesn't heat it up as much as it does fiberglass. It lasts longer. Closed cell EVA foam, so, yep. you know, blood and stuff can't get down into the deck. And it washes off super easy too. But if you're interested, they have a 10% off deal going right now until the end of April. CustomMarineFlooringMI.com. That link is down in the description. Also, if you want that stuff, no jobs too small, no jobs too big. They can do anything from a cushion for your cooler up to a full boat overhaul. And uh, it looks amazing. Well, the stuff they can do, absolutely amazing. So check them out. <clears throat> what am I missing here? I heard that Jim Lemon. I, I saw a picture actually on Facebook. Somebody caught a 31 pound trout over on uh, over on Lake Ontario. Okay. It posted up a nice picture of it. Said it just missed the state record. Pretty cool. Um, what's the biggest lake trout you ever got? Me, 28. Yeah, I've never caught it. Mid 20s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they Huge don't. One. They get there though. Oh yeah. Every now and then, you, you get those crazy ones. What's your biggest king ever? 39.8. 39.8. Yeah. That's a big king. <laughs> what year was that? 99 when we had all the big fish. Yeah. Yeah. The coho were huge. Everything was big that year. Yeah, I think that's when they were actually letting, trying to get the fish to stay in the lake an extra year or two. Well, it was, a lot of it was, just, we had that BKD mm. crash, and the alewife came up back oh, good in right, population. Right. Yep. Then the salmon, it got that straightened out, and then the salmon came back, and right. it came back big. I remember the alewives just covering Dead the root, beaches. Yeah just covering the beaches i mean you had to they're taking bulldozers out there to, to get them out the beaches in some places it was crazy so if almost a 40 pound king you yeah. that's a nice fish uh real nice fish all right yeah um uh, but I, I went off topic there a little bit same as paul what i've heard fishing around here some nice lake trout being caught on the shorelines a few browns water's still really cold it's coming along though if we get uh you know a couple of weeks of this strong south wind it's Definitely really gonna it's gonna warm up salt. quick I'm guessing mid-May it should really... You know, the last, last few years, it's been just before Memorial and the yeah. kings show up good. Yeah. I mean, we get some in the shoreline, but on our bank, yeah, seems we're on Memorial weekend. Right, yep. It might be later this year. Who knows? I, You know, it's, just, Could be. it's a weather thing. You it know? is. Yep, it certainly is. And this year has been a little bit weird on the weather. Yep. It's cold a lot later. But, uh, yeah, if you're looking to run a trip at any time, a lot of people overlook May. May can, yeah, be, a really May can be a really, really good fishing time out there. Mixed bag fish. Oh, yeah, absolute mixed bag. And the, the spring kings, nothing fights like yeah. a spring king. They go absolutely Best insane. time of year to eat them, too. They're oh, best eating that time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're so, so fresh. All right. Um, let's talk about plugs. Okay. Let's get into it. We are like uh, 15 minutes in, so, yeah, we should probably talk about them. All right, so those of you that might not know what a plug is, I'll show you real quick. We brought, I brought a bunch of my good ones. I brought, Paul brought a bunch of his good ones. And we're going to talk about these things. Um, I put a poll up on the channel. If you haven't voted on that, feel, feel free to do so. Uh, I put it out there, five different choices. What's your favorite plug? And if your choice wasn't there, you could leave a comment down below, but some of the ones I put out were green splatter back, blue splatter back, mother of pearl. Yep. You know, those are all good. The all glow. The, all, the double glow I put double on glow. there. And then the, uh, uh, what was the last one I put on there? It's eluding me right now, but uh, if you don't know what a plug is, I got a couple Jeez. examples right here. These are the Ace High series from Silver Horde. And these are what most guys are running these days. I was just talking to Paul not long ago mm -hmm. about J plugs. I mean, that's the that's dream. That's captain's choice. Yep. That's the dream weaver captain's choice. These are excellent plugs right here. Those dots uh, mm. come standard on there, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> that one is, yeah. Is it? Mm. That's not your handiwork on there? No, no, that one. Oh, those dots work good, though. But uh, you can get an ace highs from, like I said, from Silver Horde. Dreamweaver also makes an excellent plug. And uh, most of these are going to be about five inches in length. And they have a double hook harness on there. Some guys modify this. I don't so much. I don't know about Paul. I do. If the fishing's really good, I run one trouble. Do you? Yeah, because that you'll get a lot less foul hooked fish. Because yeah. you're gonna have a tendency of getting foul hooked fish yep. with double troubles. And if it's tough fishing, no, I keep the 
I keep them both on. <laughs> yeah, you want the extra. But you do take more of a chance of following a hook of fish, and there's nothing more I hate getting a foul hook fish first thing in the morning. Absolutely. And the king bite's strong, and you're like... And you're tied up on that thing. And it, so I, a lot of times I will run just one trouble because of that reason. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want to deal with a foul hook fish. What do you mean by foul hooked if you catch it like in the top of the head? Yeah, and it or, comes in spinning. Oh, and it comes, it's just hard to get in. They're you know? almost impossible to get yep. in. It's like pulling in a giant it's log. A pain. The other problem that I've seen people have, and I've had this problem many, many times, is with a double hook harness. A lot of times, if you got that fish on the back hook, they'll wrap that thing into the front hook, and they can come yep. unglued that way too. There's so, pros and cons, right? Yep. There and is. your hookup ratio with the two troubles is pretty good. It is. Yeah. And if you get them on there, they tend to stay on yep. there. Although one, I remember one day last year we had uh, we probably had close to twenty bites on plugs and we couldn't get one to stick on. Yeah, it's, well, it's it, I'm sure a lot of weird. coho, but uh, you get those days too. But uh, yeah, I run a lot of the doubles. Paul likes to cut it down to a single, and I might start doing that as well if he says yeah, it works. I mean, then uh, run a bigger hook on her, number two. Yeah, and it looks like uh, yeah, bigger hook number number two hook on there. It looks like uh, that's what a lot of the silver hordes come with yeah. as well. Do you lengthen that back on that yeah, barrel it's swivel? Yeah, it lengthen just so it's just right, you know, right, right at the, the tail. Back, yep. Okay, so yeah, if you look at the standard ones, it goes a little bit back behind the tail where Paul's is running right back there at the tail, and that's that front hook that he's utilizing only. So that's a, not, not a bad idea right there. Mm -hmm. Put that barrel swivel on there so you get that extra length. I run a snap swivel a lot. Some people will tie it directly, but I I like a snap swivel. I do too. Because of the, there's yep. so much action he's have. You yep. don't want the line to twist up. And, Absolutely. But I mean, these plugs, like this plug right here, I've caught more big kings and he's all glow, the That's double glow. The double glow. That's what I caught the two years in a row. I've gotten a derby winner, with the biggest king. Right. Last year was 35. 250, 300 coppers or like a 10 color. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you ain't running that, you're. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that thing in August. I spread all the time. And yeah. like I was telling Chris, it works right in the middle of the day. Mm hmm. You know, a lot of times everybody thinks you get them right away in the morning, but you can keep this thing on, you'll catch them yep, all day long. Absolutely. Now, guys, gals, these things come in every kind of color you can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, anything from, like I said, the mother of pearl to here's another classic, the green splatter back. Yep. I mean, how many fish has that taken over the years? Green or the blue or the and, yellow. Or... And lately, or what I've seen is, especially with Silver Horde, they've been coming out with these Super Pearl series. Mm -hmm. So that's a blue splatter back, but it's in that super pearl underneath. Um, underneath the paint is a super pearl iridescent almost um, material. That thing really. And that one was one of my best lists. So much bigger. There. That was really good. Yep. That black light. You couldn't even find them. Yeah, I know. That I might buy Bud out today. <laughs> <He's> got, <laughs> I think he's got a couple up there. Oh, yeah. I yeah. bought a bunch. <laughs> you couldn't get them last year. No, you couldn't. They're gone. Nope. Yeah, like that white lightning as well. That's mm -hmm. another one uh, right here. Pardon me, I got other ones hooked up to it, but you can see that's all of those I just showed you in that super pearl. It's that uh, really, really reflective UV tape or whatever it is underneath that paint. That one right there, yeah, is always a good one. We run that pretty, pretty constant. This one's really good in the Captain's Choice of Lucky Charms. That's, oh, yeah. That's yep. a really good plug. At the Dreamweaver Lucky Charm, Captain's Choice plug, that's another excellent one. But the point I'm trying to make is these things come in, you name the color, it's probably got a, it's probably out there someplace. And you know, the J-plugs still work, mm -hmm. but we just, you just don't see them around as much. Right. And I catch fish still on them. I mean, yeah. they, you know, it's, these kind of took over around, at least in our area. I think so, yeah. You know, and, but I run a lot of these too, the little number threes. <laughs> we're gonna talk about that yeah. here in a little while, but uh, That's yeah. That's a really good plug. Hang, hang on to that, we'll talk about that here shortly, but. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Those number threes yep. and number fours. Especially if there's coho around. Yep. They really like them. Yep. I mean, chrome, UV, glow, you name it. There's a color on there. Dreamweaverlures.com has all their plugs on there. Make sure to check those out. Um, you can check out Silver Horde on the Tangle Tackle website also. TangleTackleCompany.com. Within a few weeks, I'm thinking I'm going to have a video out on my must-have plugs. And you're going to see a lot of these on there as I go through the ones I think everybody should have in their tackle box. There's things about these plugs that people need to know, too, okay? When you get a fish on, you mm -hmm. get them in the net, mm -hmm. just don't go throwing that fish on the deck. <laughs> you don't want that, because a fish will go nuts, yep. start thrashing and start banging that plug on the deck, yep. and plug, plug can get jumped. Oh, absolutely. Yep. You say, make sure you hold that head up. You know, I usually try to kill them, billy club them. Right. 
But yep. don't hit your plug when you're billy clubbing. <laughs> or step on the hook. And um, yeah, yep. that's a still crack. I've had a problem with the hordes cracking. Yeah. Not, I haven't had much problem with these plugs. They're cracking. pretty durable. They're pretty those, durable. Those dream weavers are real durable. They're compared thick. to the hordes. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, if you get water in it, it's not going to work. You're going to like, why did that thing go dead? Well, you get a little bit of water, water it's junk. Yeah, it's full of water. You just throw it away. Yeah, you Paul know? Paul just made a huge point right there. Uh, yeah. What he's talking about is when you get that fish in the net, and we try to do this really with any time we yeah. get a fish, we try to keep tension on the line so the head stays up yeah. off the floor. And it, the other thing it does, it keeps that fish from really tangling that net up too. Because there's nothing worse than having a plug tangled up in yeah. the net. Through the, I mean, through the material itself, back around, sideways, forward, you name it. Nothing tangles up a net like a plug it's terrible. With, with two troubles yeah, on especially it. Especially double trouble. And now you're tied up or your mate's tied up trying to get this thing out of the net. You got another rod going off and you got all hands on deck and it's chaos. But yeah, keep keep tension on that line. I do the same thing. I take the club and yeah, get the I fish. Yeah, I try to get the fish under control. Yep, yep. Plus, it's a lot. So I've had clients stick their hand down there. And I'm oh, like, you dangerous. try to tell them that. And they bur- I've had a couple times buried their hands with these plugs. Oh, yeah, it's, it's dangerous. A double trope. You know, yep. so you got to really watch it with these yeah. Yeah, one of the, that's how I learned the hard way. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it happens when these plugs more than it does anything. Like I, did my, hook in your hand. I did mine on a meat rig. I, I gilled it and held yeah. it up, and fish took a big you know, big kick and came right off my hand, and as it went down, that, that trouble caught me right in the finger. Yeah. So now that fish is hanging on to me. I'm hanging on to it by the plug, and uh, it was not a fun time. But, yeah, it's a great point, Paul. Get the fish under control. Control it in the net so you're not banging it. Because these things aren't cheap. No, it's ridiculous they're how much they are. Like 12, 12 bucks now. Yeah, they're going up more and, and more. They'll so. probably be up to 15 here by the time yep. summer comes. So, yeah. And if you got a hot plug that's going. You, you don't want to get it wrecked. You don't Because you're going to be crying. You know, you don't want to one plug will work better. You'll find one that'll work. Like, I don't know why this one's catching more. It's just got the right action. Right. And just yep. Any given day, you find you know, that one. Some of them plugs I keep for the tournaments. If I'm going to fish a tournament, I won't even run a really good one. But <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I, I had one in Ludington. It was like that. I was telling him when I won Ludington ways back, I had one plug. It was, it was a custom one. It was similar to this color. I painted it. I wouldn't even run it. Mother of Pearl? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, yeah, it was a a little bit more pearl in it but yep you see that mother of pearl on there yeah there's some of these these mother of pearls are a lot more pearly or more pinky you yep. um it really depends i don't know wh- why i mean it's all mother of pearl but they do look a little different from time to time yep. yeah but uh, big fish like them they, they big do kings like them. yeah mother of pearl is an absolute must have in the yep. box what year did you win uh Ludington? i don't know it, was, it wasn't too long ago 10 years? Probably something like that. Yeah. yeah. I haven't fished it in a while. Another guy that's won Ludington. I, I'm just lucky to have these guys as my guests on here. I would love to win Ludington some yeah, year. That was a fun tournament. Oh, uh, they I love fishing Ludington. Yeah. That's just a blast. Uh by far one of my top three tournaments to fish. Yeah. Just a good time. Everybody there's so cool. All right, so different sizes. They come in them. Uh, these are uh, the number fives, I believe they call these. Uh, they're about five inches in length. There's a number four, it's about four inches in length. And then that number three, if I could see that again there. A couple of them. These number threes are absolute destroyers on the cohos. And you can but see big kings like them too. They do. Yep. So mm-hmm. you can see the difference in size there between that number three and that number five. Much much bigger or much much. And that smaller. one's got the through the hooks. So I usually tie them direct. I don't usually put a snap on these because yep. it's got the bead chain with the hooks. So that's a great thing. I to tie show. it direct usually. So I'm going to show everybody that real quick. So on these ace high styles. Again, it's that fixed uh, twin hook harness on there. This is more the J-plug style where it actually has a channel down through the body. Your hooks actually go onto a swivel or a bead chain rather, feed through there, come out the nose, and you can tie direct to that thing. There, the other bonus to that is if you break that thing off, you can get it, back. it, it floats up. Mm-hmm. You're gonna lose your, your hooks, but you get your plug back. Yep. So what time of the year you like running that number three? It's usually August. Mm-hmm. I mean, you probably catch them even before that. I mean, we have a tendency to not start running plugs. Maybe we should run them sooner than we should. I, you know, I run them I in pr- May. You know, you can catch some fish on them in May. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, there's no doubt. You know, and August is usually when a coho, especially a coho, like these little plugs. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. They work really good. Yep. And that's yeah. another thing you can do is, like I've talked about in the past, if you're opening, if when you're cleaning your fish, you open up that belly. Take a look what's inside the size there. Of the bait. Yeah, yeah. Look at the size of the bait. Match the hatch. If you're seeing a bunch of small alewife. Don't be afraid to run out that number three or that number four, the smaller plug. It might be exactly it what was, they want. It wasn't as good for me last year because we had big bait last year. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and, it was a ginormous bait. Yeah, and it's so the bigger plugs seem to work better yeah. for me last year. Absolutely. All right, so May, you don't run a whole lot of plugs? I'll throw one out here and there. I yeah. mean, I just, 
you know, when somebody you hear somebody, yeah, you know, you go buy information a lot out, you know, in the yeah, water. Yeah, no, you get that circle going. It seems like it's a spoon bite more for me and May than yeah, anything. I agree. I, you know, super slims and May yeah. seem to be the standard, but every now and then, I'll like you said, I'll run a plug out there. You can get um, fish on. You, you absolutely can get no, fish no. on. Don't be. I guess what we're trying to say is, don't be afraid to experiment there. If you got a good bite going, if you got a spoon that's really going hot, try to find a plug that matches that spoon color. Get it's it worth out a there. try. I it's mean, absolutely worth a Because a lot try. of people aren't running on that time of year. Yeah, exactly. Especially if you got big fish around. Yeah. You know, the big oh, yeah. kings. Yep, the kings. They like they like to put on the feed bag. Yep. And that's exactly what that thing is imitating a yep. big a big bait big fish. Bait. So what about June, July? Much there on July the is pretty mid July. We yeah. start running them heavy. You know, yep. and they're always on the boards. I like yep. running them on boards. Oh yeah. I run them on riggers first thing. Yep. A lot of times. Oh yeah. Usually a board thing. You know, two fifty, three hundred coppers pretty hard to beat you know? it's, it's really hard depending to beat. on the thermal climb too i mean if the thermal's mm -hmm. up high you can run them on two three color leads absolutely there's times we're fishing the beach right in tight and we're mm -hmm. on you know on a one color yep. i ran them straight flat oh yeah absolutely right on the surface too yep. so yep still that'll grab these things oh, yeah, too they, yeah, they, they yeah. love these things yeah mid-july that's about the same for me i started getting the you know still flash or fly heavy yep. you know a lot of meat rigs too but start really leaning towards a lot more plug bite as well um, seems like it gets that's when you start hearing more and more people getting them on them. And, yep. You know. The other benefit to plug, I mean, not only do they imitate a bait fish, nice it's rattle in there. Yep. Real nice rattle in there. So the fish aren't only seeing it, they're also going to feel it and hear this thing. They're going to pick up that vibration on their lateral lines down that water column. I mean, they could be hundreds of feet away, not even be able to see one of these things, but they can actually feel that mm -hmm. in the water. So also another great tool to bring fish into your spread yep. I mean, just get something down in your in your spread that's got a little bit of noise to it yep. Yep. at least get them over there and looking at your stuff um then in august of course that's pretty much plug plug heavy time for See, me. yeah for the most part it is yeah. you know, still a lot of flash or fly though you know i was me huge for yeah. around here we get a lot of fish on cut bait you know oh, yeah. especially if the thermal's deep yep you know them really shine when it's up higher You'll start, yeah. you know, the thermals up higher, that's, especially purehead fishing. Yeah, you're absolutely that right. The peers, there's yeah, days. that's a great point Paul just made. I was going to throw that out there also. I seem to really see the plugs shine when, when the thermal's up yeah. or you got high lines going for some reason. If you, you got steelhead in the area or whatnot, that's when these things really go. I don't run a whole lot of plugs super deep. Um, unless they're on downriggers. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, that, probably on downriggers, yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah. First thing in the morning yep. a lot of times. But. And then again, I... Yeah. Two years ago, we took a 31 pound king on a 450 copper with a plug. Yeah. You know, so, and these things will get you a few extra feet of depth too. Yep, exactly. Because they do dive a little because of that uh, that steep nose on there. They'll they'll dive a little more. So on a on your uh, your 10 color, you might get an extra five to seven yep. feet out of it. So something also to think in mind. But yeah, downriggers in the morning, love them. Um, you know, people talk line. I usually up my poundage John with plugs, mm -hmm. especially running double troubles. I would usually run 25 to 30. Yep. I'm not going to run no 20 pound. Yep. You know? I got 25 on my uh, yep. my corners also in my in my chute. Uh, just because if you got uh, these plugs on they there. They get wrapped in your line, yeah. and the, line, the hooks will cut your line. Yep. And now, another thing you can do, uh, I'm just going to jump on that real quick because we just talked about it. If you are running these double hook harnesses and you're getting a lot of trouble with that thing coming and wrapping back into that hook like that, you can take a little bit of, uh, of hot glue. Yep. Take a hot glue gun and put a bead of glue right down in the middle of that trouble right there, and it'll actually prevent, not all the time, but most of the time, it'll prevent that thing from wrapping back in there. It'll save you a huge, huge headache. That's yeah, something that's, I figured out over the last couple of years. Yeah, it works really, really well. I've done well. that a lot. Yeah, it works good. Yep. And uh, <laughs> there's nothing worse than getting that thing all the way wrapped and just double wrapped around and then you're sitting there for an hour with your best plug out of the water yeah. because that thing is so... And, the, and your mono will get hooked in there too. Oh, yeah. That's when a lot of times you'll break them off Yep, because the line's wrapped up in there. Yep, absolutely. And so a couple of couple pros points there then. Think about either going to that single hook harness like Paul showed you with that extra barrel swivel on there so you get that nice length. Or if you're going to run double hook harnesses, think about putting that drop of hot glue down there inside that uh, that forward treble. Mm -hmm. It'll really help you out. Yeah, I got to start doing that with a lot more of my plugs. Yeah, I know it gets you get lazy. You know, you got so many plugs <laughs> and no lazy. You need the right to spend word. about two hours <laughs> lazy, doing them all. Lazy is the right word. Well, lazy is the right word. <laughs> you know, you, August, you're always lazy. You want to oh, go home and go to bed. Oh man, you run, <laughs> run five doubles <laughs> in a row. Yeah, you just want to go get some sleep. You don't yeah. want to go put hot glue on your plugs. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So what, uh, 
you got certain colors like early in the year that you prefer over later in the year or vice versa? You know, it's you talk I you know I talk to a lot of guys so it's an information thing mm -hmm. too and it changes from year to year. So mm -hmm. everybody asks me, you know what what's you know, every year it's different yep. for me and yep. you know, we got such a network of guys we yeah. talk with yep. and somebody'll say, Yeah, that one plug's been working good and right. you know, and vice versa I might tell them that I'm getting them on a certain color and it's, you know, hot that way. But them UVs have been a hot yeah, plug. Yeah, those super pearls. Yep. I find and those, then, I found those, uh, I can run those early in the morning before sun. Yep. And you can leave them out there after sun as well. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It could be like one year, uh, that puppy right there, that white lightning, that super pearl white lightning. And there's two different white lightnings. There's one that just has the white paint under it. And then this is the super pearl. Um, there was two. Two years ago, that thing could not be stopped. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the hot plug for all of two or three weeks. Then last year I ran this thing. I couldn't catch nothing. I almost, I almost couldn't buy a bite on this thing. I couldn't get nothing on the year you guys were getting. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. I don't you know. know. I mean, yeah. it, but uh, it just, you got to run what works for you, too. I mean, yeah. not everything's going to work for you. confidence base. Yeah, confidence. Yep. Yep. If you think it's going to work, more than likely it's probably going to work. I like the chrome plugs, too, though. I the do chrome's too. got. You know, there's a lot, you know, the, like we were talking to orange redhead, you know, the chrome yep, redhead. Chrome redhead, which That's I can't, great plug. which I can't find anymore. And yeah. I think I have one left and I'm afraid to run it because I have one left yeah, and I don't want to lose it. But uh, yeah, if anybody knows a place where we can find some chrome redhead plugs, hey, give us a shout, please. This is a plug that the Lyman plugs are, mm -hmm. can be a really good plug too. They got a lot of action, and yeah. especially for like coho. Yeah. Watch your fingers. And um, they got a really crazy action so you don't want to run it in a, in a tight spread you want to, yep because that thing goes crazy you know? yeah these limans are really really hard to find um there's a, a company out of canada called best lure company i think it's bestlurecompany.com or bestlureco.com they have plugs i have some of the box i should dig it out but they look just like these limans and they run just like them yep. too but you're going to pay for them they're not cheap they're all wood plugs they're hand painted and i think they're going for 18 to 20 bucks a plug yep. But yeah, these little alignments are absolutely fantastic as well, if you can find them. It looks like uh, Paul... That one's my... I, I'll put the, that tape on a lot of my plugs, too. The UV I tape? had a lot of my plugs in my boat, which I'm not... My boat's in Ludington, so... Is that the, that's just the clear UV, isn't it? Yep. Yep. So you can see that on there as well. Yeah, don't, yeah, be, you can, don't be afraid to doctor your plugs up. And oh, absolutely. A lot of guys will use an airbrush and paint them up different colors. And, I, Sharpies. And, yep. I love Sharpies. Sharpies. Yep. There's nothing better than... Uh, you take well, that, you take that mother of pearl right there, and a black sharpie, and you put dots on that yeah. thing, or different, a couple different color dots. Don't be afraid to experiment with that kind of stuff because it can definitely, definitely pay off. Yeah, I, I agree. I like early in the morning. You can't go wrong with that double glow. Yeah, that's, um, that's my big king bee. There. That is a fantastic plug. As the sun comes up, you can leave those double glows out, like you said, um, or if it's a really, really bright day. You can start switching over to a you know a plug that's got a lot of flash in it. This has been a really good plug for me the last couple of years. I don't even know the name on that thing, but it's another super pearl with that rainbow pattern. And I found that uh, later in the day, as the sun gets brighter and brighter, and if we're putting these on some longer covers, yep. like 300, 350 plus, these these really, really bright UVs can do well as well. Yep. I, they don't have to glow. A lot of these do double duty. They'll mm -hmm. actually have UV and they'll glow. But uh, I found that uh, these really, really bright ones later in the year, later in the day, can really do well for you. That thing right there, that was my number one, well, last two years, my number one coho plug. They just okay. can't seem to lay off that thing. It was coho. <laughs> <laughs> I just love to destroy everything. Yep. They'll bite anything and destroy everything on the back of your boat. Yeah, um, great, great points from uh, Captain Paul here. Keep in your network, talk to other people down at the, uh, down at the boat launch, fish cleaning station. Come on here, check us out. We're going to do a fishing. We still do a fishing report every Sunday. Um, or go to the local tackle shop. Go to the tackle shop. Yep. You got good tips yeah. for you what colors are working. If you're coming to Manistee, call uh, call Tangle Tackle right here. We're always happy. To, if I'm in here, mm -hmm. I'll give you a detailed fishing report. Down Ludington, you can call Captain Chucks. They'll talk to you as well. Um, a lot of good information around. Yep. But yeah, don't uh, just don't try, try not run into a blind. But if you are, if you can't get any information, what would be the plugs that you absolutely say you can run? You're gonna run six lines. What plugs would you absolutely put out there? If you had no information, you just woke up from a three month morning, nap. I'd have one of the UV ones. I'd have a mix, trying to see what they want to bite. Yep. They all glow, of course, and yep. then the double glow, all glow, yep. and then the UV, the green splatter. Yep. 
And the purple splatter. That yep. was that's been really good. Yeah. The purple splatter. That's been a really good plug too. So I'll show these off. So we're gonna start with these. And the lucky charm. Got a green splatter back. Got a blue splatter back with a super pearl. We got that purple, uh, I don't know what they call that, almost like a purple Seahawk. But uh, the Lucky Charm. The Lucky Charm, Captain Choice. And the Double Glow. You cannot go wrong with those five or six plugs right there. And then I'll even, I'll throw that back to you there, Paul. You gonna take some of my plugs off? No, I'd love to, but <laughs> I'm not going to, you know. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> But uh, a couple other ones that I'll throw in there that you absolutely should think about throwing out in the mix. Yeah, that's a good one. Actually. Mother of Pearl, again, that thing right there, you, you should have out there on any given day. That's the Lucky Charms and the Super Pearl. Absolutely love, Purple Lightning, somebody just answered that question. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Um, but yeah, that Lucky Charms and the Super Pearl. That one's really good. That was good last that year. That Seahawk. Yeah, that was really good for me last yeah. year. Too. That Seahawk I found, especially later in the year, up around the pier heads, yep. those stupid, aggressive colors like that. I mean, it's not That's mimicking. I mean, this this looks like a bait fish. I mean, with the color, mm -hmm. this looks like something you'd see in a football uniform. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't look like a fish. No, but when the the salmon are up around those pier heads later in the year, a lot of times they're biting out of aggression, yep. and uh, a lot of times those more aggressive colors can be exactly what the heck they want. And yeah, even the fire tires when I did good around the pier heads. Yep. Um, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, that thing right there, it glows and it's got great color. It's got a little bit of sparkle on there versus that. Yeah, those are a couple more that I would definitely have out too. But let's that talk. One's good. Yeah. That is. was that was really good for me last That year. is a good one. Um, so let's talk about pierhead fishing. I mean, that's the majority, you know, later in the year, the majority of what I'm running around the pierheads, I think you are too, is mostly plugs. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, sometimes it's a spoon bite in there too. Sometimes I can't get a bite on a plug in right? there. Right, yep. But, you know, it is a plug thing usually. Um, you know, it's just one of the things you got to just make changes a day to day, especially, you know. But, you got to stay on them. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. But, you know, it's definitely, a, you're always going to have plugs out there, yep. especially if they're, you know, you're catching fish on them. So I see, you, I see you out around the pier heads when I'm out there as well. And uh, what's your typical spread on your pier head days? How many long lines? How many divers? I usually run three boards a side. Yep. And just, I only run two riggers because I... I only got two riggers. Right, because you got to... And I usually run slide divers yeah. in the pier heads. Yep, yep, absolutely. Set on yep. four, probably? Yep. That's why I set mine on also. Um, what do you what do you like having on those slide divers? Um, I'll run plugs on them. I mean, it, uh, you know, there's times the plugs are really good on them. Absolutely. A lot of spoons, but I'll put flashers on them, too. Yep. A lot of times, I'll run flashers in a pier head. Absolutely. They do good on the pier heads on flashers. Uh, what about meat rigs? You run those oh, around yeah. here? Yeah, yeah, I like having... Definitely. I have a shoot rigger. He doesn't. He runs a 100 horse kicker on the back of his 38 foot boat how yeah. fast will that boat go with just a kicker just the kicker yeah you ever tried about it nine mile an hour <laughs> nine miles an hour well the boat's got to be thirty thousand pounds yeah. plus that's a huge boat it helps out when you got a motor down yeah no doubt <laughs> i had one motor down for a week and it it worked all good well it's know? good yeah but yeah um same with me uh i'm a shoot rigger i like running a meat rig or a big flash or fly yeah. down there Spoons or plugs on my out and downs. Slide divers for me also set yep. on four. Usually spoon or a plug on there. And then on the, on the days that uh, it's not crazy busy, I, I try to get three boards out. Some it's days you can't. It's usually lead core, two or three color leads. Yep. Usually running. Yep. Flat line even yep. some days. Yeah, two or three color, even a four color. Or you, if you can get out with a five color sometimes too, if you're not getting in a little too tight to the pier head yep. where it gets a little shallow. But uh, we will get them fished on the shoreline. Which is nice. Sometimes. It is nice. Yeah, when you can get them down there, you know, yeah. end up your head. Don't don't overlook that, everyone, because uh, that's something I love doing, and I picked it up from watching him over the years. You get a nice bite just going down the shoreline. Stay on that troll. Don't yeah. think you have to spin around and go back across the pier heads. Take it for a mile mile hike and mm -hmm. see what you sometimes pick up. Sometimes it's really good. It is. Yeah. Especially if you go north out of Manistee, you got those couple cricks up to the north there. You can have some nice fish hanging around. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, here's a question I have. I have often. Uh, Making turns, uh, especially in tight quarters, you're one of the best at it. I've seen you do it, and I, I, I think I know your secret because I try to do it on my own boat. But you're on that nice troll. You don't have much room to turn around. What's your secret to getting that boat around without tangling up? I usually will pull my inside boards. Mm -hmm. At least I'll maybe leave one out for the turn. Mm -hmm. I'll just bring them right to the boat and just bring hang them off the boat and yep. make my turn. I can turn hard. Then. Okay. 
Yep. So um, that that's one big thing right there. Your inside boards is something mm -hmm. I started doing. If I got to make a really tight turn, because if you think about it, those inside boards, if you start turning that way, those lines they want to dive on you, and it's a big pain. Once yeah, they is. start diving, and, uh, so bring them in tight, or even better yet, if you got to turn really hard, bring them all the way in. Just pull them right out. Yep. Now, do you do you uh, goose your speed a little on? Oh your yeah, yep. definitely. That's the other thing I learned from watching yep. them as well. That's something I try to do is when if I got to make a really hard turn to get back on a track that I want and a lot of traffic out there, I'll give her a little goose on the speed and a lot. Of, that'll keep keep your, your stuff tight and yep. keep it from going on the bottom. Keep your baits yeah. up high. That way, uh, everything's not drooping, especially around the pier heads yep. because it's so shallow. Your yep. stuff can just drop to the bottom. Yep, absolutely. All right, good, good point. I do the same thing on the shelf too. If I got to make a quick turn, I'll pull my inside boards and just whip it. Yep. Yeah, I've seen you. I ain't messing around. <laughs> yeah, know, it's just, I've seen you times. Yep, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, pierhead fishing plugs are an absolute staple out there, but they're not the only uh, show in town. No. You know, don't be afraid to mix in some super slims or even some mag spoons. There's times the spoons will shine big time in oh, the pierheads. Yeah. Yep, you know, absolutely. Oh, what else did I want to talk about on plugs? I know there's a bunch of... Oh, here's another one. I wanted to make sure I showed this. This is a mother of pearl with a ladder back. And a lot of times you'll find these ladder backs really work well on any given day. Well, what else you got in the magic magic uh, spoon box over there? You have to dig through them because it's just chain, you know, you got so many different colors you're playing around with. And something like you say, these chrome ones, I remember one year this one was hot. That was a hot one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the parrot, I think that's called. Or vegetable. Or that, oh, that's a mixed veggie. Yeah, yeah that's the, uh, the dream weaver. Yeah, that was good. Pure head bait. Sometimes they want that bright color, you yep. know. Yep, but that's that gaudy color that yeah. they do like around the periods. So if you think about it, that's something, if you're new to the game of uh, salmon fishing. Get your wall at all. <laughs> get your wall. <laughs> yep. Like I always <laughs> tell Paul, it, when I met him, I should have just gotten a large pile of money and set it on fire. Just uh, never even got into the sport, but no, nah, I'm kidding. Uh, around the pier heads, though, the gaudier colors seem to work. If, if you guys aren't, uh, if this is new to you, the, the fish actually stop eating before they run up the rivers. Yep, they'll actually shut yep. And their, their stomachs will actually shrink right down to nothing. Mm -hmm. And at that time of the year, they're not looking for that thing that because uh, they're hungry. They're looking at that thing because it's ticking them off. Yep, it's and they'll, they'll take a smack at it. So that's really why those gaudier colors, like uh, well, that's the Dreamweaver Double Glow. Yep. Yep, that's a nut. That's a good plug. That is a really good plug. And they hold up good, like I said. They don't crack. Dreamweaver's got that hexagon. I don't know if the camera can pick that up or not, but there's actual imprinted hexagon. This one's good. That Michigan Shiner, that's Ooh, yeah. a really good one. Yep, that's another uh, Dreamweaver Michigan Shiner. Yep, that is excellent. I might just have to buy that at the end of the day. Oh, that's a good plug. Yep. I, don't know. I got them in the box. I think I only got a couple of those. Right, how many plugs do you think you own? Oh, that's not even. I got <laughs> hundreds. <laughs> hundreds. Exactly. How do you carry? I mean, I think uh, I see the way you it's carry. It's not a plugs. good way to store them, hurt. I mean, these boxes are the best thing I found, but yeah, you know, it's just so many. You know, that's the way I do it. Yep. Spoon box is what we're trying to say. Yeah. The special mate spoon box. That one with the grooves in it, you got like that. Yep. That's one I like. They'll actually hold these plugs just fine. I hang mine off the back hook, just let them dangle right there. The ones I should hold that right up if I can. That's that, a, that's gonna, the it's box. It's gonna be a pain in the butt. But yeah, the the special mate that actually has uh, the little partitions for each individual yep. mate really helps those plugs from getting wrapped into each other. They're gonna anyway. Yeah. And if the box ever flips over, just count off about six hours of your day because <laughs> yeah. you're, you're going to be what there a mess. for a while. Yeah. Oh, it's an absolute mess. Yeah, let's uh, let's catch up on the chat here, see what people are asking, if anything. Guys, gals, if you got any questions, uh, we went through that pretty quick. Yeah. But really, plug fishing, it's not rocket surgery no. in any way. Uh, like you talked about, you can run them on really anything you like. Uh, downriggers, I like them later yeah. in the year. Long leads. A lot of times we just run them way long. You know, mm -hmm. like, I know a lot of guys, they'll just, little boats out there, and they're getting, I got a guy, at Buddy, he goes out with just two downriggers running long leads, and he does good. Yeah, oh, absolutely. With the plugs. What do you mean by long lead, though? What do you consider? Oh, he runs them way back. 100 plus? I mean, I don't like doing it because I got all these boards on, yeah. but he doesn't run a lot of boards and right. stuff, and yeah, he's running them all. Yeah, so if you got a small spread, you know, run them back. That's that's a great yep. point. Go for a little bit of stealth on them. Yep. Yep, absolutely. For me, I think uh, most time on my downriggers, it's 30 feet. Yeah, that's the same here. Yeah, 25, 30 feet. But yeah, definitely in the morning, downriggers, my out and downs later in the year, every morning at least one has a plug on it. Sometimes both have, yeah. and then I got the flasher fly and the shoot rigger. 
Uh, you know, like a big white hooch. Yep. Um, just thing. bring those bring those fish in. And then uh, I like them on my long lines too. And uh, I will change up the colors as the day goes on. Like I said, those double glows in the morning are fantastic. As the day goes on, if it gets nice and bright and sunny, change over to the UV, mm -hmm. change over to some of the, the, the double duty ones, the glow and the UV. And don't be afraid the chrome to. Too. Yeah, and the chrome. Yep. On the darker days, you got any plugs that you absolutely swear by on darker days? You know, it's that that green, that blue and green one was. That Seahawk. That was really good. Yeah, yeah. that Seahawk is always good. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. the double glow too. The mother the, of pearl, of course, the purple glows, one glows good. really well. Purple yeah. splatter. That's what's really nice about those those super pearls, though, is because they do glow yeah. and they do have that flash as well. So yeah, don't be afraid to get them out there. I, I mean, a three hundred copper for me some years, some days can't be beat with a plug on. That's it. it's a good one. Deadly, yeah. but they, yeah. you know, lead core works good too. Oh know. yeah, yep, yep. Ten well, color, it depends what you want to run. Sometimes I got lead core on one side and copper on the other. Just sometimes one all fishes the other. Oh, absolutely, day to day different. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That lead core. That some days that's the the one thing that you can't be stopped. Yeah. There are days you, you copper just can't be stopped. But yeah. every day is a little different. But yeah, so we, we ran through it. I mean, like I said, if you think about it, plugs aren't difficult to fish. Mm -hmm. Just go out there and give them a rip. Don't be afraid to run them late in the year especially. And don't be afraid to run them early in the season as well. If you got spring kings around, you're going to get bit on those plugs, especially those smaller sizes mm -hmm. like those Limans or those best lures or the number threes or yep. the number fours. I think those, that's when they can really, really shine. But uh, you, you like running those number threes later in the year too. I usually run them on a cohort or on more. All right, but, I, but they'll they'll work. I, you know, like you said last year, they weren't as good for me. But yeah, I think because because we had such a big bait. Yeah. But the year before, they were on uh, fire. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Um, that's a that's a tip I'm actually going to take out of this as well because I don't run many small ones later. Oh, in the you year. definitely want to at least try them because they have their day. You yeah. know, and, Great. You know. See, I just I got educated. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. All right, let's uh, let's open it up to questions. We are. 46 minutes in, we got, um, well, we got over 200 people here. Thanks to everybody for being here. And everybody say a huge thanks to Captain Paul Schlafly for me. Like I said, RiversideCharters.com. If you're looking to book a trip around Manistee and if you don't want to go with me, that's okay. We'll still be friends. But uh, don't <laughs> overlook Riverside Charters. One of the best boats, if not the best boat around. But let's open it up for questions. If you guys, gals, if you got anything you want to know about plugs, I got the guy here that should be able to answer it, and if we don't know the answer, we know other guys and gals that might know the answer. I had uh, George Freeman and Scott on here yep. last week, and boy, I tell you what, George, he's a wealth of information oh, as yeah. well. Yeah, good great guy. Great fisherman. Yep. Scott, too. Scott's, yep. a, Scott's a really good fisherman, too. Just a nice guy, yep. too. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got here. How about a flasher with a plug? Brian Kerber wanted to know, do you ever run a flasher in front you know, of a plug? You know, I haven't personally explained try it much but i've seen guys get them mm -hmm. with them and yep. that's maybe one thing we should probably be trying more you know? Why not? i mean there's no reason it wouldn't work and yep absolutely and it's probably one of them things that maybe us guys are lacking not to try you know <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> you know, it's, no you're right you're absolutely right you gotta be open-minded when it comes to this fishing because you just you don't know what every day's different yeah 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 you, sometimes you look at something you go no that'll never work and then i was on the guy i mean i know spoons run good behind flashers they do they work really good behind yep. flashers they really do that's yeah. something we've been talking about actually the last couple of weeks is uh that's one of the most common questions i get spoons well, behind flashers they do work. Yeah. and the more that I, I talk about it with people the more i want to get it more into it you yep. um Here's a good question that's actually something I want I should have covered earlier. Speed with plugs. And uh, Justin Kelly wants to know, how slow can you run those ace highs off a of copper or board? Uh, I mean, you can crawl them down. Too yeah, low. I mean, there's a lot of times you you get fish on and you're backed right down to nothing and your boards are dropping. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that up and down speed is the mm -hmm. key. Yeah. I mean, yep. up and down, a lot that drops your cores up and down. Yeah. Like and, that, and I've had caught many a fish when you're fighting other fish, you know, and yep. so they were great. At, you know, you got a lot of current in the lake, and a lot of times I think when you're dropping that speed, it's dropping too, so it's still right. got action. Yeah, so yeah, that, that plug will flutter down, and I'll take it back off. A lot of times I'll put my boat right in neutral when I'm going. I'll, yep. I'll start marking fish, and I ain't getting them to go, and I'll just jam it in neutral, let my stuff settle in, pick it up and go. And, that's, a, that's a great technique. I do yep. that as well. Yeah, I mean, a lot of guys do it. Uh, and, talking to Mark Jamer one time. Yep. I think he's the one that turned me on to that, or you did. I can't remember. But, yeah, 
that's a great, great, uh, great thing. If you see fish on the graph, another thing I'll do is I'll zigzag. So yep, one's one side slagging. Well, yeah, absolutely. Just pop it neutral for three, four seconds. Hit it back in gear. And all I think thing. they're a great tool because they do work at different speeds, mm -hmm. fast and slow. And yeah. I mean, they're they got flotation, so they're always yep. they're doing they, something. They got a lot of stuff going on down there in the water. We don't absolutely. know, you know. what I mean, absolutely. You know, that's and why I, I think they work so darn good. And I think the J plugs. I mean, if you really want to slow the boat down and go slow, I think that's when the J-plugs can really shine yep. for you. Because those J-plugs, I think, are a lot better running at the slower yep, speeds probably than, true, than the yep. ace highs. <clears throat> Let's see what else we got going on here. Ever use a jointed J-plug from Dennis Clement? Um, I don't think I have. I've got some. I, that was back in the 80s when they were around. I mean, I caught some fish on them. I can't say they shine that for me, but I'm sure they work. They got days. Well, absolutely. You just, like you say, you can't find them or, you know, at least not around here, maybe online. Yeah, maybe online someplace. Yeah, I'm sure they're there someplace, but yeah, I, I've never run them. Um, but you know, if next year, if all of a sudden you call me and say, hey, these jointed J-plugs are destroying mm -hmm. everything, I'd, I'd probably buy 100 of them. Yeah, jointed Rapalas were good. So. They do. Yeah, they really, really do. Yeah. Um, Stephen Al Alligat, I believe, uh, when running uh, on Don Riggers, what's the distance from the ball? We covered that. Yeah. 25, 30 feet is a good rule of thumb. Like you say, you can run them long, you know, Careful. Yeah. Just, just gotta watch you don't get tangled up. Yeah. If you're running a lot of boards and be careful. You gotta really watch. Because they do dive and not only do they dive, they can get on a side plate and all of a sudden they're going left to right and they can get But if you're a guy that just runs a few rods, yeah. It's definitely something you want, you know. I, I got like I said, I got a buddy who just goes over a couple rods and he always gets fish. I mean, he's running a, them way back. That's a great point. Yeah, if you got a small you know, spread going where you're not risking too much, run them way back. You know, get a little more stealth. Great. Um we ever use moonshine plugs? I have, and uh, boy, do they glow. Yeah, I haven't had a whole lot of luck with them. I mean, I've caught some fish on them, but mm -hmm. they haven't shined for me, yeah. you know, personally. Yep, but boy, I tell you what, they do Not light up the water. water. Probably didn't have the right colors, maybe. I don't maybe, know. Yeah, but they definitely look, I mean, it's a it's a fish imitate. It's yep. an imitation of a fish. So you put it in front of a hunger king's face or something that wants to snap at it, you could probably throw a stick down there with a hook on there it. There's a plug in it. here. Scarface makes them. That, this plug works. Oh, the Scarface yeah, works, yeah. Puts the cut bait right in there. Yeah, those are I've pretty caught a lot of fish on them. You put the cut right in it. Yeah, so that's a Wonder Bread. That has such a good color, too. Yep. So this is made by Scarpace. Um, S-C-A-R-P-A-C-E, I believe it is. And if you look on the bottom, there's a channel there. And you can actually put a, a meat strip in there. And puts a little bit yeah, of scent. That works. It does. It works without it, too. That's a nice uh, nice size there, yep. too. That's a I do like three. that size. <clears throat> yeah, so that's another great one to try out. Yeah, moonshines, I've used them and I've had success with them. So, yeah, definitely. What else we got going on? Boop, boop, boop. Kafa says uh, 36 inches from plug to flasher. So somebody else is running plug to flasher. Yeah, I know. I've seen guys run them. I think definitely 36 inches plus would probably be. Probably could even run them further. I would run them probably even a little further because they do have their own action. Yep. They don't need the flasher to to impart any action on them. Oh, Luke Gehring saying thanks, Paul. Um, elk, I can't really say that. A lot of people is always saying thank you for being here, oh, Paul, no so I just wanted to pass no it on to you. Uh, best speed for the different style from Kirk C. Uh, if, if you're going down below 2.0, I mean, you can still run the ace highs, in my opinion. Yep. Yeah, but I think throwing some J-plugs, the old J-plugs in there in your spread as well is where uh, you might pick up a few more bites because those J-plugs do have a really good action at a slow speed, like the Lyman's mm -hmm. and the best. Lyman group. especially. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But anything anything over 2.0, I'm almost all ace high. Yeah, I, like I said, they, you can catch them fast, slow. I mean, they got yeah. – they're, they're – that's why I think they're so good because they yeah. work at different they're speeds. They're tolerant. You know? Yeah, they're real, real tolerant. But yeah, I, you know, back in the 80s, 90s, though, it was all J-plugs. It yep. was all Lord Jetson J-plugs. And then Silver Horde came along with these ace highs. And it seems like you were saying they before we even start, it seems like in Manistee they've just absolutely taken yep. over. Ludington as well. I know they're real popular in Frankfurt. So you don't see many J-plugs anymore. But not saying they won't work. I, yeah, they, you know, I still run them. Mm -hmm. I, I got some big number fives I ran and did good on them. Pearls. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see here. Ken Turry wants to know, where can we find the smaller number three plugs? Really, online. Yeah, online here. Captain Chuck's probably have them. I think Chuck's might have some. Yeah. I think Bud does have some here in Tangle Tackle. I don't think he's got any in stock right now, but uh, do an online search. Yeah. Yep, D definitely do an online. Go to the Silver Horde website uh, and look up, uh, look up there and see what they have as well. 
Uh, do you need to tune your plugs to troll true? Um, do you do any tuning on your plugs? I, you know, you definitely do want to look at them in the water when you mm -hmm. throw because they will get messed oh, up. Oh, yeah. This will get bent on you. Yep. And then it's not going to run right. You might have yep. to mess with it to get it to run, you yeah. know, not sidetrack. That's actually a really, really good and question. And that's when, that's when it comes in when the water gets in them. If yeah. you get water in them, they're junk. They're, you know, they're done. It's, yeah, I'd rather be fishing than I said. That's actually a real, uh, Bob H. Um, that's mm -hmm. a really good point because I've thrown a plug in the water before and the thing just kicked way over yeah, on the You want to look side. at them when you put them in the water. Yep. And if just, that's a habit with me for everything. Anything bait I've yep. run. Put it in the water, look at it, okay, boom. Take boom, a look boom. at it, yep. It's one thing you do want to do. When every time. You want to look at it every time. Yep, that's one thing I picked up over the years from you and a bunch of other guys. Yep. I throw something in there and I take two or three seconds. It doesn't take long. Make sure it's running right. Fish can mess it up. You know, all of a sudden it quits working. Yep, and you're wondering why. Then you why. got a dead rod in the water, you know. Yep, and you're wondering why that thing's not taking fish anymore. But yeah, I've, I've had plugs run right up on their side yep. and just stay to that one side. And that's not what you want. If, to see a plug run true, Nose forward and just wiggling like crazy and just staying on track. We were, we want, you know, that's another thing too. And I've had guys and I haven't done a lot of thunder sticks like we use mm -hmm. them in the river, mm -hmm. they're deadly for salmon. And I've used them, I've they, used, and they work out on the lake. I've too. used Uzuris and Rapalas yeah. and about everything. The only problem that I ran in with that is two bites on a on a $12 Rapala, yeah. it's probably done. You know, they with a thunder stick, you know, they work good, but that's a lure you got to tune too. Yeah, you yeah. got to watch. Absolutely. They will get messed up. And then what I really like seeing a plug though is wiggle, 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 dart, 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 wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You get them on that little bit yep. of dart every now and then. That's a good plug when you can get it to do that. Oh, let's see here. Oh. Todd Bone just asked about, have we ever used a J-plug with a cut bait in it? We showed him that scar yeah. paste. That's a great one. What's the best fish, uh, this is from Teresa Flanders. What is the best fish catcher with the current or against the current? A little off topic, but uh, that's a good question. I like with the current. You like it going downhill? Yeah. But then you know, sometimes it isn't that as good. It's you into know? the current. It's, it, but I prefer a downhill troll myself. Yeah. But it's one of those things you got to play with it because sometimes if it's not working for you, you got to get off it. Right, you know? and that's funny because I'm more uphill trolling. I like I, I like into the current quite a lot, but, you know, Paul's it got... It depends on how rough it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true, too. Yeah, you, I mean, if, you, if you're taking the waves on the beams, that's no fun if you try no, to get with it or against it. Sometimes get a good speed. But. It is, but that's where a fish hawk, you know, really comes yep. into play. And uh, fish hawk, if you don't know what that is, it's a probe that goes down on your cannonballs, your downriggers, and it'll actually give you the speed down there at the cannonball, not up here on top, you know, at speed over ground, because speed over ground, the speed at your lure can be completely, completely different. I mean, sometimes as much as a mile an hour plus. So, yeah, I'm, I'm more uphill, you're more downhill, but I, I mean, think... when I'm in a fish in the pureheads, I've had a lot of times, I don't even catch them going out. Mm -hmm. I can't get them going mm -hmm. out. And sometimes it's vice versa, right. you know, I mean, right. It's like, man, I cannot get one going in, you know, but it's just, it's, it's yeah. the changes. Yeah. I mean, do you like setting up in the morning with the current then or against I do, it? personally. Do you? Okay. And I usually try to look for against. Um, yeah. I don't think there's a wrong answer there, really. No. If you're catching fish. Depends uh, what, yeah, they but, both work catch fish. They do. I just prefer the with, with the troll mm -hmm. myself. But. Great information, though. It's a great question, though, Teresa. Mm -hmm. Great question. And uh, I'm actually... Considering what Paul just said there, I'm going to consider that a little more myself. Uh, Team Fish Commander, what about a number five flatfish? Man, I've never run a flatfish. Right, wouldn't that be speed for good? I don't, I don't think that thing would troll very good, to be honest. Those things are real quick slow fish. Speeds. Yeah, quick fish. Or, you know, maglip. Maglips, a lot of guys definitely. use maglips. Yep, I've run them. They're they, more speed forgiving. And they do work. Yeah, the flatfish really is a slow speed troller. Yeah. You put those things, anything over probably one and a half, and they're going to go crazy. Uh, Glow Ghost J Plug still smash from Bob Hunter. Yeah, Glow Ghost yeah. is a good one. Well, somebody's saying check out Lucky Bug Lures. They have a different take on the J Plug design. Jim Lemons shot that out there. Okay, I've oh. seen that. Where's that? At? I don't. Lucky Bug Lures. I don't know, Jim. Tell us about it if you don't mind. <laughs> you got, I'm always looking for. <laughs> you got both of us interested. Yeah, throw some information out here. I'll uh, I'll go look it up. Uh, what is the actual way the plugs normally run? Terry Bradshaw just asked that, and it really. What I'm looking for is just a nice straight track with a nice wiggle, maybe a dart every now and then, but just a nice straight track. If it's going up onto its side or constantly going up onto the side and then back down, that's when you want to start looking at the connection point yep. uh, on you your split ring. You might have to ring. mess with the 
it gets messed up yeah, sometimes. Yeah, definitely. Do you run plugs on standard divers much from Todd Fletmeyer? So not a, not a sly diver, a regular diver. Yeah, I, I have. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, definitely. Yep. A little bit longer lead. I mean, I usually run about a 20-foot lead on That's what mine know, is about, yeah. also 18 to 20 feet. Yep, definitely. I wouldn't go much shorter than that with a plug. They definitely have days. They work really good on a oh, diver. Heck, yeah. Jeff Spears says, nice to see you, Paul. Thanks, uh, Jeff. Yeah. Nice seeing you. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate that, man. Do you ever run quick fish in place of plugs uh, from Transmission 612? Uh, yeah, like we are just talking, those maglips can run really, really yeah, I really haven't good. messed with them much. I have, and I, I like the way they run. Uh, they're, they're durable, too. Mm -hmm. uh, a big fish isn't going to mess with them. they got a up. crazy action. They do. Mean... Yep, definitely. All right. Looks like, uh, looks like we're starting to run down on the chat here. That's great. T.D. Schlau said he just installed his Fishhawk X4D on his boat. He can't wait to use it. I Absolutely. just put one on, too. Another new one? The new one. Oh, the new yeah. one. What did you have on there before? The X4? The older one, yeah. Oh, you, I thought you had a D. No. Oh, it was a 4. That's right. Yeah, you can't beat having that depth on there. All right, we're like we're an hour in. we still got over 200 people here. Let's wrap it up right now uh, with not many more questions coming in. Again, everybody, throw a thumbs up on here. Say thanks to Paul. Um, that's a, just a nice thing to do. He's taking time out of his day to come down here and talk to everybody. And Paul's a busy guy. I know that. So, Paul, thank you so much for being here, man. Fun. Oh, that's glad, glad you enjoy yourself. Everybody, so this is going to wrap up just the back to basics lure portion. What I mean by that, we've covered spoons, plugs, flash or fly, and meat rigs. We're going to continue, though, next week with the back to basics theme. Next week, we're going to talk about boat control, big boat and little boat. Gonna have a nice guest on here that runs a nice small boat. You know Mike Link? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Good yeah, fisherman. Yeah. Runs a good boat. A small up and boat. Coming new captain. Yeah, he's getting his license right now, but he runs a 19 foot boat, which is the average yeah. size of a smaller boat. And I'm gonna be here talking about bigger boat boat control. And I think that's something everybody's gonna want to check out because uh, there's really nothing. Well, there's a lot of things as important. But that's boat why I put my outboard on. Yeah. Well, there's a number of reasons I did it. I know. But boat control is highly, highly important. So come back next week and check that out. Let's get out of here. Thanks, everybody. Take care.